I think the forks are just, I think it's the forks that are bent. We'll find out. I haven't even seen it yet, so. When I turned 23 years old, I made one of the dumbest financial decisions, which a lot of people do in their young 20s, but I bought a car and then I bought a truck and I was so dumb that I was actually upside down in both of those vehicles by $6,000. And if you're not sure what upside down means, it's just you owe more than the value of the cars are actually worth. So I had this $6,000 discrepancy. Anyway, I still cringe when I think about it. In fact, I did a video, it was probably, I think it was the third video that I ever posted on this channel. So if you're interested, you can watch it here. It's a little bit cringy, so don't make fun of me, but it goes through all of the details. Now, after paying off all of those vehicles, all that debt, I vowed that I was never, ever, ever again going to buy a depreciating asset at least until I could make money on it or I was stupid wealthy and it didn't matter anymore. But I'm obviously not stupid wealthy yet and so I had to find another way to fund my cars and fund my toys and so this is exactly how I did that. What we decided to do or what we learned to do was we buy vehicles from auction. We buy them super cheap. We either fix them up, use them up, keep them for a little bit, and then we just turn around and sell them when we're done with it. Other times we'll just buy them right away, fix them up, and then sell them for the quick cash, depending on what it is. Sometimes it's toy and we'll want it to drive around for a year or two. And then as soon as the, the value of that toy, four-wheeler, snowmobile, whatever it is, as soon as that value comes down and reaches what we have into it, that means it's time to sell it and do it again and do it again over and over again. So here, here are some examples of the vehicles that we've bought over the years. Uh, we bought a Ford Focus, we bought it for $2,700 and we sold it for $6,600. And actually this, this car got hit by hail um, so it got totaled out again, but we kept the car and the cash. So basically it was like getting a free car. We bought a Ford F-150, bought it for $9,000, sold it for $15,000, bought a Kia Optima for $5,200. Uh, after fixing everything up and getting it ready, we we're probably $8,000 or so into it. Um, we, we still own this one. This is my wife's daily driver. Uh, right now it's probably worth about 9,500 or so. So we're getting close to that break even point where it's time to sell it. Uh, but when we bought it, it was worth $13,000. I've purchased multiple four wheelers. I've purchased multiple uh, snowmobiles. Uh, we purchased a Ford F-350. Uh, we bought that for $14,000, sold it for $21,000. We bought a camper uh, for $6,700, sold that for $9,000. And the most recent purchase is the snowmobile, which I bought yesterday for $4,200. And right now it books right around $9,200. So I'm gonna break down step-by-step step how we do this, but it's it's not a difficult strategy. It's, it's very much the buy low, sell high, and that's how you make your money. So it's just like I said earlier, we buy vehicles from auction, whether it's a car or a toy, a razor, four-wheeler, whatever it is, we buy them from auction, we fix them up, and then we either keep them, we hang on to them and use them ourselves and then sell them or we turn right around and sell them right away if we need some quick cash. So in just a second, later on in this video, uh, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how we do that, how to uh, gain access to the auctions, how to bid on them, what the process is when you go and pick them up. It's super easy, I promise. I just went and did it yesterday and I'm doing kind of a vlog style video, so be sure to watch that. I think I should also mention that the title of this video is how we buy cars from auction. Uh, the example that I'm using is with a snowmobile. Please don't freak out. The process is exactly the same, whether you're buying a snowmobile, a four-wheeler, or buying a car. Okay, so getting right into it, the auction that we buy these vehicles from is called Copart. And a lot of people ask, they say, do you have to have a dealer's license to do this? No, anybody can go onto the website and bid. All you do is you go to copart.com, you sign up for an account, and then you have access right away. There, there are Copart lots all across the United States. Um, I live in a smaller city, so we don't have a Copart right where I live. The closest one is probably about two to two and a half hours away from me, but I've got another one in Salt Lake City, which is three hours away, and another one in Boise, which is four hours away. If you live in a bigger city, chances are you have a lot right there where you live. I know the question you're asking though is why are all the vehicles so cheap? 
The reason for that is because the majority of them, not all, but the majority of them are salvage title vehicles. Typically, these are vehicles that have been wrecked and they've been totaled out by insurance companies. And then the insurance companies don't want them and so they'll actually sell them to these auction yards so that other people can purchase them. So I, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, whoa, 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 you're, you're an idiot. You're buying salvage vehicles. Like, you know they're not worth anything, right? And they have this problem, that problem, and it's a death trap because the frame is wrecked and you're gonna get in a wreck and then you're gonna die and there's, no, relax, hold on just a second. I would challenge anybody to come and take a look at my garage, look at all of our cars, look at all of our toys, and I would bet that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a, a clean title vehicle and a salvage title vehicle. After repairing them, you literally cannot tell which ones are which, but the salvage title vehicles we usually get for around 50% compared to their retail value. Okay, the next question that I get all the time is what about the resale value? So you're trying to flip these vehicles. Do people actually wanna buy salvage title vehicles? And the answer is yes, all the time. We sell everything on Facebook and Craigslist and we're honest about it. We, we disclose, hey, this is a salvage title. Um, it's been in a wreck, all the damage has been repaired, but people, they come in waves and they're like, great, this looks awesome, it's been fixed and it's super cheap, so we wanna buy it. So we don't ever have any problem selling any of our vehicles. How do you price a salvage title vehicle? Like how do you know how much it's worth? Um, typically speaking, what I do is I look up the clean retail value on Kelly Blue Book and then I price it at 80%. So let's say I am looking up a car and it's valued at $10,000 for the clean retail. Most of the time I'll post it on Facebook for about $8,000. You'll get some buyers that are gonna come and say, oh, it's salvage title. Uh, we're gonna offer you 50% or 40%. Tell them to take a hike. I most of the time sell vehicles for 80%. And the cool thing about this too is uh, like the, the ATVs, the four wheelers, snowmobiles, things like that. Typically speaking, I start them higher. Usually I'll start at 90% or 95% because toys are one of those things that people just don't care. People expect toys to get damaged. Either you're gonna hit a tree or you're gonna roll a four wheeler or whatever. People don't seem to care if toys are salvaged as much as they do just like a normal car or a truck. Okay, what about financing? Can you finance these vehicles? Typically speaking, no. So whenever we buy vehicles from auction, uh, we, we buy them using cash. Now there are a couple credit unions that I found that will loan uh, to salvage title vehicles, but they have restrictions. And those restrictions are typically they will loan 50% of the, the clean retail value. So let's say I'm buying uh, a four-wheeler for $4,000 and the clean retail is $6,000, but they'll say, hey, we're only gonna loan 50% of the clean retail. So if the clean retail is $6,000, they're gonna loan $3,000 but I'm buying it for 4,000, that means that I'm gonna to have to come up with a thousand dollar difference to be able to get a loan through a credit union. Again, most of the time we just buy with cash because it makes it easier, but there are ways to get financing on these. So you just have to call around and see what the different credit unions or banks offer. When do we decide whether we're gonna keep the car or we're gonna flip it? Really, it just depends on our lifestyle or if we even want the thing. If I can make quick cash, then I'll just hurry up and flip it. Or maybe it's a car that myself or my wife actually wanna drive, then we'll hang on to it and we'll drive it for two or three years and then we'll just turn around and sell it when we're done. So it just kinda of depends on if it's something we actually wanna use or if there's a big spread and we can make five or $6,000, then we'll just sell it right away. Once you win a bid, can you change your mind? Yes, technically, but please don't be that person. I mean, if you say you're gonna buy something, please be honest, please don't be that shady person. Like, if you commit to buying something, you're pretty much stuck with it. All sales are final, there's there's really no returns. Uh, you do have to put a deposit down with Copart. Um, and so technically speaking, if you win a bid and you walk away, you could just lose your deposit and you could never go and pay and pick up the vehicle. Again, don't do that. Um, but typically speaking, all sales are final and there's no returns. How do the deposits work? So with Copart, before you can bid on anything, you have to put down a deposit. And Copart will only, uh, the, the deposit is 10% of the maximum you wanna bid. So let's say there's an SUV that I wanna bid on. I, I think the max that I can spend on that vehicle is gonna be $15,000. If that's the case, Copart's gonna want 10% of my maximum bidding amount. So if I wanna spend $15,000, I have to give Copart a deposit of $1,500. Now I, uh, I get this money back, it's, it's a deposit, and so as soon as you go and pay for the vehicle and pick it up, 
you can actually uh, withdraw your deposit. You can't take your deposit and apply it to the the value of the purchase, like you can't use that money to buy part of the car. But as soon as you pay off the car, you pick it up, you pay for it, you can have your deposit be requested to be refunded back to you. Okay, so enough about that. Otherwise, this video is going to be infinitely long. There's so many nitty gritty little things that I could talk about. But let's get into the process of actually finding and then bidding on a vehicle. So once you get into your Copart account, you're going to start searching through all the different listings. Uh, you can filter by location, by type, by year, by miles, by condition, all these different things. You put in your filters and then it'll show you a list of vehicles that meet that criteria. Once you find the vehicle that you want, you can click on it and get kind of the detailed information on it. And once you find it, you click on it, you'll be brought to a page that looks like this. This is a, a screen that I recorded um, and I, I took this before I bid on it just because I knew I was gonna be recording this video and I wanted to show you kind of how, how this process looked. So you can see pictures of the car uh, or the toy or whatever it is. You can see detailed information like miles, why it was wrecked, where the damage is, what works, what doesn't work, uh, miles. I mean, pretty, pretty much everything that you need to know is on this listing. Sometimes the information is kind of slim and unfortunately that's the gamble with buying vehicles at auction. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. You can't really see them in person unless you go visit the auction, which you're allowed to do. You're allowed to walk through the auction yard and see all the vehicles before you bid on them if you want. But like I said, for me where I don't have an auction yard super close to me, I can't just stop by and see it. And so most of the time when I bid on something, it's just going off the pictures and the information that I have online. Okay, once you find the car or the vehicle that you wanna bid on, uh, there'll be a, a listed date on when the auction is. As soon as that auction begins, you can go on there and you can start bidding on your vehicle. Everything you do as far as the bidding process is done online. There's no like in-person bidding. Uh, it's just all done remotely on computer. I've Most of the time I'm sitting at my laptop, but they've even got an app on your phone. You can bid on, on the cars you know, wherever you're at. So this is my actual live auction of the snowmobile. I wanted to do a screen record so you guys can see the entire process. And it's it's really just like you'd expect uh, a typical bidding war to go. It's very similar to like eBay, um, but you go ahead and as soon as the auction starts, you bid on it. And then if somebody else wants to bid higher, then they can do that. So I go back and forth with this guy in Indiana, but ultimately after I bid uh, 41.50, the guy decides, you know what, he's done, he backs off and uh, and I become the winning bidder. Okay, again, I could go into so much detail on this. There's a lot of kind of intricate little nitty gritty details, but for just the sake of this video and the length, I'm gonna kind of uh, turn over to the second half of this video, which is the process of going to pick it up and how that all works. So I'm going to jump in the car and we're gonna head down to Ogden and pick up the snowmobile. I'm on my way today to Ogden, Utah to pick up a snowmobile. So we're gonna load up the truck and the trailer and hit the road. And I, I realize that it's the middle of July right now uh, and there's no snow around me, but the best time to get a price on a snowmobile is in the summer. So we're gonna go pick one up and see how we did. Let's do that. Okay, so we, we've got about an hour-ish until I hit Ogden. Um, and I, I think I should mention that I have never seen this, uh, this snowmobile. It's completely sight unseen, aside from the pictures that I saw online. So uh, uh, yeah, it can be a little bit scary, but um, Copart is pretty good at showing the damage to any vehicles or lots of detailed pictures. So you kind of have a pretty good idea going into it you know what what to expect so in the pictures for this i i can tell that some of the skis on the snowmobile are, are kind of like out of whack i don't know maybe somebody hit a tree or something but um one of the skis is definitely like uh, misaligned so i'm i'm budgeting about i, I hope 500 but i'm i'm 
always uh, making sure that I'm super extra conservative. Maybe it'll be a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars, but whatever it is, I know that I can still make money on this, or at the very least, I can sell it and break even. My wife and I are also looking at getting um, another car, but it's actually over in Ohio. So. Marco from Whiteboard Finance, if you're watching this, I may have you go check out a vehicle for me. I know you're a big car guy. Um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, if, if you don't have a, a lot next to you, that's okay. You can, uh, you can just pay freight and have it shipped to you. But where Ogden's only two hours away, I can just load up the trailer and uh, I can just go pick it up and save on the, the shipping costs. Uh, plus, I, I, I don't know, I like to go down and just look at the yard anyway. So again, we're about an hour-ish, maybe a little bit more away from Ogden. Uh, and then we will take a look and see uh, see how well we did or if this is, if this is gonna be a dud, we'll find out. All right, we are here. So here, I'm gonna pull on here and then this is usually where the trucks come out and load you up. I've got a trailer out back. What kind of truck? Uh, it's a silver F-150. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now is where we wait. I have got my bill of sale showing that I have paid for it. They've released it to me. And now we just wait for the, uh, the big forklift to come and bring me my, uh, my snowmobile. I think the forks are just, I think it's the forks that are bent. We'll find out. I haven't even seen it yet, so. All right. I mean, so far so good. It looks good. I haven't seen it yet or started it or anything but we'll find out all right so here it is so it looks like the lower a arm and the upper a arm maybe it's this bent right there i don't know if they hit a tree or something This side's gonna need something, and so what, like I, like we can see in the pictures, the the ski is kind of cocked out a little bit like that. Overall, it looks pretty good. Let's see. The track looks pretty good. I don't see any missing lugs as of right now, but we'll see once we get under this. I did not see. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but I didn't see that in pictures. But again, this is kind of a sight unseen deal. I don't know. It definitely hit something. Maybe hit a tree or a branch or something, but we will uh, we'll see if it starts. Okay, so I did want to go through and show you kind of the lot and how this works. So 
oftentimes at the lot they've got like vehicles on the left side that have already been purchased and bought and then the ones on the right side are ones that you can still bid on it just depends on the different lots and how they you know how they do it but some some cars are are really worth it and then there's other cars that are not you know so like if you it, it can be kind of deceiving so if you look at the front of this one you know it looks good but as soon as you get to the back You know, you can see that the whole tailgate's been smashed in and most likely it's not worth the, the cost to do it. So not, not everything is a deal. Okay, so take a look at this one, for example. Like, I mean, pretty pretty sweet Mustang, right? Like, you look at it, it's got some, you know, some blemishes, cosmetic stuff there, just some scuffs and scrapes. So you think that this one would just be perfect, right? And then as we walk around, bam. You know, you can just see, yikes, that is not in as good a condition as you think. So absolutely, it's worth, uh, it's worth the effort sometimes to come here and actually take a look at the vehicle. Um, on the sled, for example, that I just bought, based off the pictures, I knew it wasn't going to be too bad. But you can actually pay other people to come and look at the vehicles for you and do an inspection, turn the key, see if they even start, see if they move forward like two or three feet, put it in reverse, see if they move back a couple feet. Um, you can have people come and take more detailed pictures for you. I mean, you could do all these different things, but I just knew that it was it was going to be okay. And uh, but still, I mean, it's it's pretty cool. It's fun to come and look at the lot and see what they have. All right, we are all strapped down. We are ready to make the trek back home. But again, overall, I'm really happy with the purchase. I think this will be a super nice sled for next winter, uh, which you know is in four or five months but now is the time to do it i try and buy all my toys and for the winter in the summer and vice versa um just because the the demand is not there obviously and so you could actually get a much better deal um yeah again overall really happy we'll make the trek home and then once we get home we'll actually tear into it but so far all i'm seeing is really just the a-arms that need to be done reattach them and then maybe just make sure that the skis are aligned properly and then we're gonna have an awesome sled ready to go for $5,500 total and this thing books for $9,200.